But it doesn't have to be all blood and guts to make us scream. Last week in London, the work of one of the masters of film terror was celebrated in a unique concert, the composer Bernard Herrmann. We teamed up with the BBC Concert Orchestra to find out just how he did it. This is the music of nightmares, the work of a man whose spine-chilling film scores terrified audiences for decades. His name was Bernard Herrmann. Born in New York in 1911, Herrmann made his debut by scoring an experimental film for a first-time director, Orson Welles' Citizen Kane. He'd go on to work with directors including Francois Truffaut and Martin Scorsese, but his greatest collaboration would be with the original master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock. Their partnership would span 11 years, including such landmarks as North by Northwest, whose tense action scenes he scored with Latin American rhythms, The Birds, for which he created a pioneering soundtrack consisting only of electronic squawks, and The Man Who Knew Too Much, in which he made a personal appearance as a conductor in the climax at the Royal Albert Hall. But Herman's greatest scores would be for Hitchcock's masterpieces, Psycho and Vertigo. These films would express the driving force of their collaboration, a fascination with the dynamics of fear and desire. Together with the BBC Concert Orchestra, I'll be exploring Herman's music to reveal the techniques he uses to create true terror. Psycho is the story of a young woman, Marion Crane, who steals $40,000 to start a new life with her lover. She stops at a motel and decides to freshen up with a shower. The rest is film history. Hitchcock filmed Psycho in black and white, so Herman offered him what he called a black and white score, using just the strings of the orchestra. In the shower scene, Herman generates terror by using a series of radically dissonant chords. Let me show you the first chord, which is actually the makeup of all the different entries all put together. I'll show you how diseased, how positively poisonous this chord actually is. First of all, we've got an E flat in the first violins of first violas. Now listen to this dissonance when I add the second violin, second viol on an E natural, one semitone apart. Now the first cello and the first bass have got an F natural, another semitone dissonance. And finally the second cellos and the second bass have got a G flat, a further bit of poison. This is an action scene, and the action is stabbing. So Herman uses violent bow strokes to mimic the stabs of the knife. Now the last effect in Herman's arsenal of terror is the use of stabbed bowed notes and violent pizzicatos, that's plucked notes, which sound like snapping sinews. Herman's pizzicatos suggest the last gasps of life before Marion ebbs away. Here's the music in full. planned the shower scene without music, but Herman scored it anyway, and when he played the finished piece, the director was won over. It's one of the scariest scenes in film history, but there's no gore. The real murder weapon is a violin. If Psycho was Hitchcock and Herman's journey into darkness, Vertigo was their romantic dream. 
After losing the love of his life, Scotty, played by James Stewart, becomes obsessed with another woman and tries to mould her into his dead love. The score features Herman's most haunting love theme, made up of just four notes. It has an incredible dying fall quality to it. It sort of droops, already giving you a sense that Scotty's love for a woman who's actually dead is diseased and downright immoral. This love theme simmers throughout the film, but it finally reaches its climax when Scotty has nearly achieved his dream of reshaping Judy, his new girlfriend, in the image of Madeline, his dead love. While Scotty waits for her transformation, the tension builds. The violins seem to echo his anxiety. With the makeover nearly complete, Judy returns to the hotel where Scotty is waiting. Till now, the love theme is tinged with melancholy, but for a brief moment, Herman gives us some hope. The music has now actually become upwardly mobile rather than drooping. There's perhaps a sense that maybe this love could be wholesome, could be fulfilled, could be full of hope. Then through using another string effect known as tremolando, where the bows play very, very fast on the strings, you get a kind of a free song, real static electricity in the sound. He develops the idea and makes it into something very different, much more disquieted and less wholesome. And that's because one crucial detail remains out of place. Madeline wore her hair up, but Judy wears her hair down, and Scotty wants perfection. As Judy makes the final adjustments, Herman uses the tremolando effect to ratchet up the tension. And there's even something unhealthy about the way the music bulges and falls, bulges and falls. And then at this point, Herman uses another one of his kind of strict string techniques, very effective one, called sul ponticello, which means the bow is to be placed over the bridge of the instrument. You get a very, very kind of metallic, rasping sound. And then finally, the climax. Dressed as Madeline and bathed in green light, Judy emerges like a ghost from the past. For this extraordinary scene, Hitchcock knew that dialogue was inadequate. He told Herman, we'll just have the camera and you. Long before the excesses of contemporary Hollywood, Hitchcock and Herman perfected the art of showing sex and violence without showing sex and violence. Their partnership would continue until 1966 when, after nine films together, they had a catastrophic falling out on the set of Torn Curtain. They never spoke again. Herman died in 1975. Hitchcock would become a legend, but his films are impossible to imagine without the tender, thrilling, terrifying music of Bernard Herman. My thanks as ever to the BBC Concert Orchestra.